In this video, we'll take a look at how you can prepare a 3D model for printing on a 3D printer. And to do this, I'm going to use an example I saw on Facebook by the person that was asking the question. So he was building a snowman ready to print off. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, one thing you've got to bear in mind is don't use shade smooth because this will only show you how it looks in a 3D view the shade flat option is how it will look when you print it so make sure you leave it on shade flat and to get it looking smoother just use subdivision so control 3 and then that will subdivide it and then just apply that okay so now I'm going to create a second sphere for the body or torso rather and then I'm going to create a, another one for the neck like so and now I'm going to create move the 3d cursor so that it's in the center of the sphere so I'll do shift s cursor to selected making sure obviously that the sphere was still selected and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to put a Suzanne in the center of that sphere and I'm going to move it forward slightly okay so the reason I'm creating a Suzanne is because it's got problems with the mesh that we need to uh, make sure are fixed ready for 3d printing so I'm going to run through the problems there's three problems in total and just before that let's uh, subdivide Suzanne a little bit maybe slightly maybe control 4 and we'll apply that as well so I'm going to join these all together so I'll select them all and press Control J. So now it's all one object. And I'm going to go into wireframe mode and just put on uh, the X-ray. So Z and then toggle X-ray. So you can see the first problem is that we've got intersecting geometry. So if we look in there, you can see inside of the spheres, we've still got the rest of the spheres. So that's no good. Also, another problem is if we go into the eyeball, I go into face mode and press L while my mouse is hovered over the eyeball, you'll notice that the eye, although it's part of the same model, is actually a, dis a disconnected piece. So that means it, it's not printable because it's got to be, the, the entire mesh has got to be one continuous watertight surface so no holes and obviously that is a great big hole uh, and, and a separate piece additionally a problem you might run into is you might you mesh might look as though there aren't any holes in it so if i just rip this so if you look at this mesh now that will look as though it's there's no holes but if you move this vertex, you can see it, it is actually two vertices. So there is a hole there. Even though it doesn't appear to be one, that is still a hole. So that's another issue. And basically they are the issue. So the intersections, um, any holes, and basically it not being a one continuous watertight mesh. Okay, so there is a way to fix this that requires literally no effort. There's no sort of uh, manually filling the holes in or connecting pieces up or looking for all these vertices or, you know, you could merge the vertices, obviously. You could just go into edit mode, choose one, and then press M and by distance, and then that will remove any vertices, but I need to select them all first, so M by distance. And you can see we've removed those two vertices that were in the same location. So how this works is it will merge any two vertices that are within this distance from each other and that's good so that's one way you could fix that problem um, but it's not going to solve the other issue so the other two issues of the intersections and the uh, separate pieces so to fix those what we'll do I'll just duplicate this first, so I'll call that uh, 
monkey original. Just delete these other objects. So I've got monkey original. I'm going to duplicate that, so shift D. And I'm going to call the duplicate um, normals. In fact, I call this work on. So this is the one we're going to change. So I'll hide the original. I'll go into the work on. And what I'm going to do is add a modifier. So I'll just make sure I'm not in edit mode. And I'll come out of this. In fact, we'll leave we'll leave it on that mode. Um, I'm going to add a remesh modifier. So as soon as we add the remesh modifier, it has solved some issues. So inside the mesh now, there are no intersecting pieces. So it's all one mesh. Even the eyeballs, if we look at the eyeballs, they're now all one mesh. But the problem is obviously we've lost all that detail. So to bring the detail back, we need to decrease the voxel size. And you've got to be careful because if you go too low, you could uh, run out of memory and Blender could crash. So it's, it's a good idea to make sure you save your file before you do this. So I'm just I'm lowering the voxel size one click at a time until we get adequate detail back. So we're getting cl quite close now, 0 0.02. We'll probably go one more. And that's looking reasonable. I mean, if we can try and go a little bit lower, but I do find quite often if we go too low, then it, it does weird things. So we'll try 0 0.005. Let's see what that does. It might disappear. Yeah. So we'll try 0 0.007. There we are. So that's probably about as low as we can go. And you can see, it, obviously, it's not very smooth now. And this is not what you want, obviously, on your mesh. So there's a couple of ways you can fix it. I'll apply this um, remesh. So the first way is you could try and use the inbuilt. Let's just hide this panel here. So the first thing you could do is try and use the inbuilt remesh. So there's a the voxel remesh is basically the same as the modifier that we've just used, or we've got a quad remesh. So if we give this a try, it's a bit of trial and error, and it's a little bit slow. But we'll try and increase this to maybe let's say ten thousand, and I'll turn off use paint symmetry. And let's give that a try. And this is a little bit slow, as I mentioned. There is an alternative method, which I'm going to show you as well. well this, in fact, there's two alternative methods I'm going to show you. So we're 40% through now. And we just need to um, hopefully get a decent topology that follows the flow of the mesh so that we can subdivide it and, you know, sharpen it up and things. So it's taking a little while. 50%. It was quite a dense mesh, so I'm not sure how many vertex uh, vertices it has, but you can see it's pretty dense. That's why it's taking so long. I don't think you can cancel out of this. Let me, well, let's leave it. So it's actually finished. And we can see, I mean, that doesn't look anywhere like, did I say 50,000? I'm sure I did. Quad, or, no, 10,000. So 10,000 faces, obviously, is nowhere near enough. But that that is a, uh, a pretty bad result, to be honest. Um... But what we can try and do is, if we now go into the modifiers and we add a subdivision surface, and maybe give that a couple, so just to get it smooth again. And then what we'll do is we'll add a shrink wrap. So we'll shrink wrap this, and then we'll choose to shrink wrap it onto the monkey original. And you can see we're getting this sort of result. And the reason we're getting this is because the holes on the original model, this bit around here, there's nothing for it to shrink wrap onto. We can try a different uh, target normal project, perhaps. But that's probably about as, as good as we're going to manage to get that. 
So it's not great. So we'll cancel that. What we can do instead is we'll cancel back to the point where we did a quadriflow remesh. So let's go back to here. So we're back at the voxel version. If we look at the mesh, and then just turn that off. You can see that is pretty high res. And we, what the aim is, is to get this nice and smooth. And the way to do it without any additional add-ons, you're going to lose a little bit of um, sharpness. But what we can do is, if we go into sculpt mode, and the reason I'm using sculpt mode is because we could use a smooth modifier, but it's incredibly slow because it's not um, it's not multi-threaded. Whereas the tools in the sculpt mode, because they've had so much uh, work on them recently, a lot of these tools are now multi-threaded. So if you've got a decent CPU, then you'll find that this will be massively faster than using the modifier. So basically I'm using this uh, mesh filter and you can change the mode at the top. So we've got smooth scale, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. And there's also a, a surface smooth, which smooths whilst trying to maintain the uh, the volume, so the shape. So let's have a go at that. This mesh may be a little bit too complex for it, or a little bit too dense, um, but we'll give it a try. So I'm going to come back out of wireframe, and let's give this a try. Let's just see what options we've got. Maybe turn auto smooth up. Maybe turn radius up a bit as well. So if we now hold the left mouse button down, click on the object and then drag. You can see it smoothed it, but we have lost a lot of detail and that was using the normal smooth mode. So let's just undo that and we'll try the surface smooth and see what we get from this. So same thing, hold the mouse down and then drag. Keep dragging. So it's very slow to do it. I mean, it's the difference is happening very slowly. So let's try the. Uh, let's just try smoothing it by hand and see how this works. So if we zoom right in, we we'll turn that down a bit. And then let's turn the strength down as well. Maybe turn that radius up a tad. And if we just run the mouse around like, like so, then we can smooth it by hand. So that's one option. And that ensures that we're only doing the part that's problematic rather than all of it. Like so. And then we can... Uh, because we've got symmetry turned on, it's actually doing it to both sides. So that's one option, and this mesh is now completely watertight. And what I could do as well, just to get rid of these bits here, now this is reasonably smooth. I'm going to mask these parts, so we've actually got a new tool called Draw Face Set, so if we click on that, and then zoom out a bit, so we're covering this entire area. If I I don't want to affect this this part, so I'm going to just bring that around. And I, if I press Shift now, and I can smooth those edges of the mask, and that will actually affect the geometry as well. So what I can do now, if I go into this mode again, and then choose Use Face Sets, if I do anything to this mesh now, so for example, if I surface smooth, then it's not going to affect the eyeballs. But let's try it with... Uh, normal smooth so if it will notice I'll exaggerate it initially as I as I drag that across we're not affecting the eyes so that strength up a little bit so you see the eyes are not being affected but the nose and thing are obviously I've gone a bit too far I'll undo that Things to about here. 
Shall I try and smooth this? Somewhere about there. Not don't go too much. And then if I come back out, we've got this effect. So we've got quite a nice result. So that's one way of doing it. And that's more of a hands-on manual method of uh, you know getting a nice smooth mesh at the end. The way I'd recommend is to use, if I just duplicate this, uh, I'll hide this one. And I'll, in fact, let's move this one to the left. So that's the original, quite sharp, obviously. And this is the smoothed version. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to hide the original again. And with this one, I'm going to do the same as we did before. So I'm going to use a remesh modifier. And I think we had it on 0 0.006, 0 I think it was. Point zero zero seven. Okay, so we're back at the position we were at before, just before we uh, took that into sculpt mode. So I'll apply this remesh. And the what I'm going to do now is, there's actually an add-on you can get. Um, and I, I bought it, it's 12, Euro, uh, 12 euros for three months. And then after three months, it just expires. And if you don't want it, you don't get charged. Uh, it's called uh, Quad Remesher from Exo, Exocide. So E-X-O-S-I-D-E, -E, I think, Exocide. And I'll put a link in the description anyway. And what you can do is you choose the model. Let's just turn on detect, turn off detect hard surfaces and remesh. So let's leave, let's put this to, we'll try it at 10,000, same as the quad, uh, the quad remesh that's built into Blender. So let's try this and we'll notice that this is massively faster. So just keep an eye down at the bottom. So there we are. It's not sure if you can see this, but it's 50% uh, already and it's shooting up quite fast. Uh, 75, 95, succeeded. And look at the difference. So look at the wireframe. And the difference is we've got, we've got the topology trying to flow the actual, uh, follow the flow of the geometry. Not perfect there. So I think what I'll do is I'll undo that. And we'll give it another try. So let's give it 20,000 and see how this does. So again, it takes a little while to start up. Although I have got four instances of Blender running um, and OBS video recording as well, obviously. So it's still going pretty fast, we're on 75% already, 95%, and there we are. So I think that's a better job. We could still probably go a little bit higher, but you can see because we've raised the quad count up a bit, we are getting a, a better flow now around the edge there. And the reason that's, is, that's important is because if I add a subdivision modifier, so subdivision surface, and let's go into uh, this mode. So this is without doing any smoothing. So if I zoom in, press, don't forget this is how it's going to print. So it is going to be, you know, not, not perfectly smooth, but I could increase this a one more. And that's completely smooth now. And we've not had to do any manual smoothing. We've basically subdivided the model. So if we look at the wireframe for both, this is very dense now. So we'll get, that'll be a nice smooth print. And this one is also dense. Uh, and that'll be a smooth print as well. But the difference is, 
this one's just cleaner. You've not got any of this, you know, jaggedness that you can't remove without over smoothing. So my recommended way would be to use this quad remesher. I mean, hopefully Blender's quad remesher will, you know, improve in the coming months because um, I think face set in the sculpt mode should help with that. But yeah, so that's that's what, that's the way I'd do it. That model now could be exported for your printer. I think uh, STL format. I'm not sure if any of them take other formats like FBX or OBJ. But the main thing is that is now one completely continuous watertight mesh. So that's what I wanted to show you. Hopefully that's useful. And thanks for watching.